Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We have stabilized the acrylic resin mandibular base plate with the aluminum foil and the light-bodied rubber base. We have not, however, completed the trimming of the peripheral junction of these materials and would like to demonstrate that prior to beginning this exercise. The tin foil and the rubber are eliminated from the periphery using the, again, the lathe mounted uh, arbor band. Uh, the band will cut both the aluminum foil and the rubber and create a smooth and clean junction uh, between the stabilizing material and the periphery of the acrylic resin uh, material. You can cut this away and then very carefully follow around and round this periphery. As we previously indicated, the final adjustments to this periphery can be made by very carefully painting the aluax material along this junction. For this exercise, however, we will not be performing that part of the finished base plate. You can see we have uh, made the final uh, adjustments. The base plate is now placed on our master cast, which was, as you uh, recall, previously cleansed of residual debris, debris and wax. We now paint uh, over the central area of the base plate some yellow sticky wax because the final treatment to the base plate is the fabrication of a tentative occlusal wax rim. This wax is used to permit the attachment of the pink base plate wax. A full sheet of pink base plate wax is gently warmed in the Bunsen burner, warming both sides, and very carefully it is rolled into a cigar shape, and it usually takes uh, approximately uh, two-thirds to three-fourths of this sheet of wax to form uh, the wax uh, occlusal rim. Again, it is uniformly heated so that it may be bent and molded uh, with your fingers. And now it is attached uh, to the base plate uh, over the top of the sticky wax and formed. It is positioned approximately in the middle third uh, of the uh, base plate and its height should be approximately a centimeter. Of course, this will vary uh, with your uh, clinical patients and it will also vary uh, particularly in relationship to the retromolar pad. Now, the wax is sealed uh, to the base plate, following around here on the lingual, and sealing it with the hot end of the number seven spatula. Again, we seal on the buckle and follow around uh, into the labial uh, region. Now, Again, in order to conserve time, we have uh, gone and made additional modifications to a, another wax rim, and we would like to point out to you some of the guidelines you should use in forming uh, your wax occlusal rim. As we indicated, the wax rim should be positioned in the middle third of the base plate. And in the molar region, it should be approximately 10 millimeters in width. In the labial region, it should be less than 10 millimeters, and it also should be oriented labially. If we turn this sideways, you can get some feel for the labial inclination or orientation of the wax occlusal rim. Also, you can see here that the height of the rim is approximately a centimeter, and it extends back so as not to exceed the height of the retromolar pad. If we turn to our master cast for a moment and we look at the retromolar pad region, you will notice that we have marked these two pads bilaterally and we are going to extend a line out onto the landing area in the vicinity of the retromolar pad. Now if we position the base plate over this uh, residual ridge and the retromolar pad, 
it gives you some indication of the relationship of the height of the occlusal rim uh, to this pad. Now you will notice that the, um, it is still too high. And we find that if you use the Red Devil wax spatula and heat this uniformly, and then pass it over the uh, wax occlusal rim, the wax will run off of the spatula and it affords you the uh, opportunity to form that wax rim to the height as indicated here by our pencil lines in the posterior region. This places the wax occlusal rim in its tentative uh, relationship, which will be further modified uh, in the next step, uh, which is the determination of the interclusal registration. This completes the construction of the mandibular base plate. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.